I know what you're thinking. There's gonna be haters watching this video. There's gonna be haters in the comments. This is just another blue pattern dial integrated bracelet stainless steel sports watch. Come on, Danny, are you serious? And you know what? All the other ones out there that you're thinking of, I dare you to try and go get one. It's two words, availability, accessibility. So what do we have here? Well, we have a watch that's using a, an, an ETA-based movement, the Powermatic 80. The 80 stands for the 80 hours of power reserve. And how is that done? Well, with the modified ETA movement, they've taken a watch that should have a movement beating at four hertz and taken the hertz beat rate down to three hertz. That means it's ticking just a little bit slower and stretching out that power reserve for over three days. So you can put this watch down on a Friday, ostensibly pick it back up on a Monday, and it's still running. Who doesn't love a good watch cliche? First things you'll notice about this watch is the waffle dial. It picks up light, it's deep, it's textured, it adds some visual interest to the watch, it makes it a little bit more fun, and it's something unique to the automatic variants because the watch was first released in quartz in early 2021 before being released in its automatic version in the summer of 2021. So with the automatic version, which is only slightly thicker than its quartz counterpart, you get that textured dial. Now, dial itself is a bit boring. Um, honestly, it looks a little bit like a Royal Oak. You have the very standard Tissot branding at the top, the Tissot word mark, the 1853. At the bottom, right above the six o'clock marker, you have the Powermatic 80 in regards to the movement. And then you have maybe my favorite design function here, which is some excellent branding by way of Tissot. I think whoever designed the PRX word mark just did a knockout job. It seems to capture this 80s essence in a way where when you look at those words in contrast to the other writing on the dial, it just kind of screams neon. This is a tried and true style. And Tissot, with the 2021 release of the PRX, is not necessarily cribbing on those designs today because this watch is a throwback to a 70s Tissot, the C-Star. So this watch costs $650. You heard that right, $650, way sub 1,000. I think this is excessively styled as much as it's excessively priced. There's no questions about what does this bezel do? You know, there is no bezel. It's got an hour hand, a minute hand, a second hand, a date window. I mean, for a first watch, what else do you need? When I put on sort of um, budget-friendly watches uh, and I wear them with casual outfits, I find that it dresses down the watch as much as I'm dressed down um, and almost makes the watch look less expensive. Where if I were to wear them with, say, a nicer outfit, you know, nice dress shirt or a blazer, um, I can elevate the watch. This, conversely, despite its price, gives you that, that nice Swiss watch feel no matter what you're wearing. I could be wearing a t-shirt, you know, I could be just in my sweats at home, and I feel really good wearing this watch. I feel just as good as I do wearing an Omega. Um, I feel just as good as I do wearing some of my older Rolex watches that I own. And I think it's because the little details here. The, the waffle dial pattern has a sunburst effect to it where it can be navy at the edges and almost like a royal blue at the center. And as you turn it, that effect, you know, with the sunburst goes all the way around and you, you pick up these really interesting light patterns. I also do love the three hertz beat rate of the seconds hand. It's a little bit different than I'm used to, but watching this sort of make its way around the dial, there's little bits of intrigue that I really appreciate. One thing I think is a little bit of a miss, and I think that a lot of watch brands do this these days, is they take for granted their own logo. Tissot makes watches at a wide range of pricing spectrums, from quartz to automatic. And there are some heritage pieces where they implement their sort of older um, oblique or, or italic word mark. I think that would have been really cool on this watch to see, or at the very least, just to get rid of the, uh, the 1853 branding beneath the logo. But that's like, you know, nitpicking. Other than that, I think this is a, um, a really tremendous offering capped off by, by a signed crown which is another place where you often see price cutting. And I think the fact that Tissot falls under the Swatch Group umbrella, you have a little bit of that extra padding and the ability to make a watch at this price point really sing. Again, to my point of accessible entry-level watches, we've been on Hodinkee Radio in the past talking about exhibition case back, closed case back. I think the purists love not to see the movement. Honestly, the curiosity gap of watches 
an exhibition case back is essential. Imagine someone not understanding mechanical watches, someone you're trying to get into this hobby. All you have to do is take this watch off your wrist, turn it over, show them this movement, show it beating, show them the rotor, and they just see mechanical watches in motion before their eyes. Um, this isn't novel, this isn't something that Tissot does singularly, but having it in this watch, I think, is so important to what it can be. In terms of wearability, this watch feels hefty in the hand, but that weight doesn't translate once you strap it to your wrist. It hugs the wrist nicely. I think a lot of things people wonder about when they wear a stainless steel watch, is it gonna pinch the hairs on my wrist? I have a particularly hairy wrist, and I can report back to all of you who love to talk about my body hair, uh, that it doesn't pinch any of those hairs. So we're all good there. Thank God. All right, we're good. I think we're good. I like it. <laughs>